Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video and welcome to a game called This Is The Police. Now, this has gotten a lot of coverage from d various YouTubers, um, but the main reason I am playing this game is because it looks so appealing to me. I love that whole managing a police force uh, aspect of this game. Not so much the story elements, of course, because that's not my kind of thing, but I will sit through the cutscenes and everything just for you guys and, uh, I guess so, I don't seem like a dick. Um, but I, I plan to play this for a few episodes at least, uh, regardless of how well it does on the channel, and then if you guys really seem to enjoy it, I'll keep playing it. Um, but, yeah, let's get in. Let's not talk anymore. Day 1, July 15th, Monday. Mayor Rogers, sex maniac. City Hall confirms rumor of Jack Boyd's resignation. We are Jack Boyd. Uh, Mark War II to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor, mayor's personal request. And by the way, this game is set in like 1985 or something. Uh, so be aware of that. And I'm pretty sure every cutscene starts this way with him like starting his car. What are we looking at the stars? Stars don't move like when that I though. Was a kid. My father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Alright, so we got this, some decision making to make here. Uh, pff, that was redundant. Um, at the press conference, so good morning. Yesterday, the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise or did you know about it in advance? Uh... Let's, let's just uh, go with a safe answer here. The mayor discussed it with me. Mayor Rogers told me that he wants a fresh face running Freeburg PD, so no, it didn't come as a surprise. Do you already know the name of your successor? I think it's a new man. Well, no fucking shit. Uh, no. Of course not, and I don't think the mayor's office knows who it is either. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy, Francis Kendrick, said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Um, perhaps. Who knows? Sounds possible if he thinks the new office would help him serve the city a little longer. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? Uh... Let's go with, uh, bullshit. Excuse me, but that's a pile of horse shit. The mafia and the police working together? Maybe they're in cahoots with the aliens? 
The mafia are a bunch of low-life criminals. How, how about someone ask a real question? Damn, laying down the law like a police chief. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Uh, let's go with the safe answer here, which is definitely not. That's just not possible. Mayor Rogers is a true professional, and he makes his decisions carefully. There's no place in our jobs for hard feelings. Thank you. All right, cool. So there was that. How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and, uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. One hundred and eighty days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a, he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <coughs> All right, day two, July 16th, Tuesday. Head of Culture Department owns villa in Italy. Civil servants' wages won't be raised this year, and Clint. Cleanness of city streets increased by 20%. That just seemed phrased weirdly, that's all. Alright, go to work. Now, hopefully I don't have to sit through another cutscene. Because Lord knows those are pretty boring, actually. Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. 
Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick, he recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Alright, so this is the actual uh, gameplay of the game that I really... Uh, Rick's... Looks really appealing. Would you like to receive tips about how, they, how about the game works? Um, show me what you've got. Freeburg PD organizes upcoming work assignments into shifts for today and tomorrow. Every shift, officers respond to crimes in progress, and detectives continue their investigations. You can freely move employees between shifts. All officers and detectives possess several important characteristics. Abrams, damn, 1230. Stars, whatever that is. Professionalism shows the overall efficiency level of your policemen. A figure around 150 is considered average. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is not entirely reliable, while those whose professionalism is considerably higher than average as are a safe bet, even in a pinch. An individual's level of professionalism may rise and fall over the course of their career. Energy shows how tired your policemen are. The less energy your people have, the less re reliable their work, and a policeman who is exhausted might fall asleep at the wheel or make a critical error on the job. Your employees lose one point of energy after each working day and restore one point after each day of rest. Your employees don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are hidden from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with any reason they can think of to take the day off, while others like to drink too much. You can only guess about these things, but you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behavior of your employees. Alright, so we only have Shift B available to us. There will be a Shift A eventually. Uh, so I, I, I'm assuming I can't really change anything in here because I don't have anything else to work with. Yeah, see, I can't do anything, so we're just going to start the day. Alright, so. I like the music, too. This is nice. Alright, so. What we do is when things pop up, um, and this will explain it actually better than I would ever would. Responding to calls is the bread and butter of police work. You'll need to send your officers to the crime scene's crime scene before the timer expires. A mark on the map shows where the call came from. The farther away the destination is from the police station, the longer it will take your officers to travel back and forth. So, the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. Okay, so here's the first one. The easiest way to determine how difficult a task might be is to check in uh, how many units you are allowed to send on the call. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat, particularly risky missions, gives you the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. Okay, so, the number of slots is not the only thing to consider. Any available information from the location of the crime scene to the presence of weapons and so on, all of this can tell you how seriously e each case should be taken. A mission might look simple at first glance until and turns into a brutal meat grinder. Or a serious call can come in, which turns out to be a false alarm. Okay. So, a married couple exited a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot back over a homeless man who'd been digging through a trash can. The driver jumped out to help, and once he saw that he hit a bum, he got back in the van and quickly drove away. So, we are going to put... Kochi on there, and we're going to put... Asano on this. So they can take care of that. Which will take them some time. We've got another one. Alright, fight. A theater manager reports that during a showing of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theater carrying a snowboard de decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theater's security guard. Okay, so we're going to send Yancey, and we are going to send Austin. So go ahead and take care of that. Alright, so we've got... 
We don't have many officers left, actually. So hopefully they take care of these problems relatively quickly. Oh, it's storming. Report. Okay. When everything goes well, the police capture the criminals and nobody dies, but the truth, truth is sometimes the criminals manage to escape. Just try to avoid any dead cops or civilians. Dead cops will hurt your roster and dead citizens bother the mayor even more than the living ones. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Yes. All right, awesome. So they got to make their way back. Cool. All right. Let's look at this. Offender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Good, 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 good. All right, awesome. So they're on their way back, which is good. Very, very good. I like that a lot. All right, we get a call here. Armed robbery. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store and made off with their whole collection of adult movies. The criminals fled in the car, but the store manager wrote down that car's license plate. The owner is one Janet Brown who lives in the suburbs. All right, so we're going to put Purdy and Subaki on that. I gotta wait. There we go. I got the guys I want. Fight. A brother and sister clashed with each other over their deceased deceased father's will. According to one of their lawyers, we don't dare separate them and our security guard is off duty tonight. Alright, so we're, I'm gonna put Kochi and Price on that job. Because Price needs the experience. And I've got more officers available, so we're all good here. We're all good. Got to make sure I'm managing things correctly. I don't want to get ahead of myself or send too many officers to something that doesn't need that many. A passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar and his money. All right, so I'm only going to send two officers because I think that that's all that we need. And we'll send Austin with Yancey again. All right, so we got three officers, uh, three police cars out. When your cops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask you to handle the situation, try to deal with whatever comes up, but don't waste your, all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your plate. Okay, the vehicle in question is parked right next to the Brown residence. The sounds of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through the living room window. Sneak into the house through an open window. Turn on the siren and loudspeaker and shout that the house is surrounded. Ah. Let's knock on the door. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Yes. Sweet babies. All right, so they're on their way back. All good in the hood. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Good, he got some experience as well. So they're on their way back. This guy's still out there. Good, goody, 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 good. All right, things are going well. Let's see how this went. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Good. Like the sound of that. A lot. Actually. All right, cool. Great. So we're doing well here. I mean, it, granted, it is the first time. Okay, so... I want to wait till my officers get back. All right. So... I think I'm going to go through one more day with the cutscenes and the gameplay, and then we'll call an episode. How does that sound? It's going to be a bit longer, but I want to play this for a bit longer. I feel like I haven't really gotten enough of it yet for one episode. So let's end the day. If you, th if you think you'll need a couple of extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cop to come in and work overtime, but if they're working flat out, they'll be much more exhausted. Somebody's bound to make a mistake. Okay, so shift A is all these guys coming in. Um... I don't think I'm going to need anybody to work overtime, so we'll be fine. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face. 
the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business, so you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people, old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Alrighty then. So we're getting into st some sticky stuff here. Francis, Francis Kendrick announces retirement day. Construction of Cinema Museum postponed again. Legendary singer Gennaro Crespo comes to Freebird. Alright. No cutscenes, please. <laughs> Please, I just want to get into the game. Come on, man. Please, please, please. Yeah! When a police officer is too tired to be effective, he will ask for a day off. Sometimes officers will request days off even when they're at full strength. Some of the reasons you'll hear are far-fetched, while some are very serious. Don't overindulge your subordinates, but don't antagonize them either. Remember that everybody's got secrets, and you've got to make sure these guys have your back. All right. The last few months, I've been taking antidepressants three times a day, but today I ran out of my prescription. The pharmacy said that they're getting more in tomorrow, but I'm afraid without the pills, I'm not going to be much good. My mind keeps digging up all kinds of disturbing thoughts. Can I go home? Yeah, you can go home. In addition to their performance ratings, police officers also possess rank. Employees begin at the lowest rank and are going to be elevated in rank with one, two, or three stripes. Once a week, you can pass out stripes and improve the rank of any employee. If you think that no one is worthy of the honor some week, you can postpone the ceremony until later. Insignias won't go until your people are ready. All right. 
Employees have ranked not only increased in professionalism, but also learned to command. Whenever a ranking officer is on the scene, his or her colleagues are more likely to perform better than usual. Sometimes when cops get ranked, they start thinking more seriously about their service. This can mean less drinking, more time spent on the job. Some of them might even turn out to be de dependable. All right. So I have two stripes I can give out. He's already got one. I'm going to give one to Vandal, and I'm going to give one to Robbins. All right, cool. So let's start the day. Freeburg is in one of those cities where you listen to what they say or nothing at all. You can always select any song from your collection and play it at any time, just like in real life. Well, the life of your grandfather. So I can pick a song if I want to play it, but I don't really care. So we're just going to go to the map. I, I I don't really care all that much. Let's learn how to hire and fire cops. Um, okay. Oh, affairs. Police station. Labor market. You have a certain number of paid job openings for which you can hire any available applicant. Job slots are separated between officers and detectives. Okay, so you want me to hire Marguerite Barton. So we're, we're shift A right now. We should probably hire her for shift B. I would think. Okay, right, and then go to personnel. Want to free up a slot time to fire somebody. We're going to fire Roy. Oh, you want me to fire, fire Birch Jr.? Okay, I'll fire him. If you have legal grounds for the termination, no one will ask any questions. You might need to fire them anyway. Legality be damned. But that could land you in additional proceedings, and your other staff will become more, more worried about keeping their jobs than they are about actually doing their jobs. Another way to free up a slot is to have a police officer killed. But that's not really a valid option, right? Uh, okay, I guess I, I gotta fire him illegally. I don't have a choice. Alright. Let's go. Okay, vandalism. We received a frightened call from the local th cathedral. This morning, the abbot discovered that someone entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard's tombstones are painted with satanic symbols, and some uh, someone might have broken into the pieces. And it seems there are even marks from a shovel, but the abbot would say no more. All right, so this, this doesn't seem that bad. So we're going to send Robbins on the job, and we'll send... Uh, we'll send... Ah, uh, we'll send Birch on the job with him. Alright, so they'll go and take care of that. And maybe I want to put on a song, I don't know. Alright, vandalism again. Business, business, businessman Harley Jones looking out his window saw two tainers scratching off offensive slogans on his new car. Alright, so we'll send Vandal and we'll send... Grant to take care of this. So they'll take care of that. Cool. Good. Alright, good. So we'll be getting a report any second. Uh, offender caught. Officers unharmed. Good. Very good. Okay, what's this? Suspicious individual. A waitress named Myla reports that she just served a chicken Eddie and a Diet Coke to, to a dangerous criminal who she'd seen on television just this morning. The culprit is sitting at the window eating a burger. All right, we're going to send Stonevall. And we'll send Birch Jr. with him, even though he's being fired. Because why not? Okay, report. Fender caught, officers unharmed, good. Very good. Make your way back over here. We need more uh need more guys. So pick up the pace a little bit. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Alright, good. Okay, the waitress had mistaken retired officer Frank Nero for the fugitive in question. Alright. So it was a false alarm. Cool, good. Okay. Mr. Boyd, my bouncer stuffed himself with Mexican food again, and now he can't get off the can. Meantime, the line outside the club is stretching around the block. We need someone outside who can tell the cool guys from the punks. No, fuck that. Why would I waste my time with that? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. You know what? Fine. You know what? I will. I'll send... You know what? Birch Jr. is almost back. 
we'll send him out to do that job because it's a meaningless job. It's a meaningless job. So Birch Jr. can take care of that. All right, let's see what's going on here. Drug sales. An anonymous call just came in. A clown carrying balloons at the, at the skating rink is selling crack to teenagers. Well, isn't that great? <laughs> uh, let's send... Robin's on the job again with Birch. They'll go and take care of that. And it's almost the end of the day anyway, so I don't really have to worry about sending too many officers out. Ooh, a suicide threat. A naked man carrying a canister of gasoline has threatened to set himself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum becomes popular again. All right. <laughs> we'll send Vandal. Just Vandal. We'll send Grant, too, actually. So that they can take care of that. All right, report. Sorry, Chief, but I quit. In one night, I pulled in more cash than I earned a month working at this dump. Mr. Sorkin said he wouldn't mind taking me on. I guess I just wasn't cut out to be a cop. Well, I fired you anyway, so thanks for your help, Mr. Boyd. I'll take that gladly. All right, so we got to see what's going on. As police arrive, a clown is seen making balloon animals for the kids. Carefully watch the clown from the stands, cover up in a raincoat, and pretend to be a an illicit customer, take the clown onto the ice and round up any witnesses. Let's do this. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Good. Very good. So we gotta wait for this other report. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Cool. Alright. So we stopped a suicide today. That's good. That's good. So, oh, oh, I can end the day. Well, guys, I'm going to leave this episode here, actually, because uh, um, we've been going for long enough here, and I'm really enjoying this game. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing more of it uh, on the channel for at least a little while. Um, so, yeah. If you guys want to see more of This is the Police, let me know down in the comment section below. Like the video and share it with your friends. And let them know that you want to see more of any game series I do here on the channel. Uh, if you guys want to get the game for yourself, the link down to it is in the description box below, but if you don't want to pick it up, that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, and if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you didn't, tell me why in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel for more gaming content. I play all sorts of games on my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you very much, and I'll talk to you later. And respect the police. We'll come for your ass.